Good evening! My name is Dr. Monty Martin, and this is The Fate of Drakenheim, the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition live stream campaign. I'll be running the game tonight as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Sebastian Crow, the Half-Elf Shadow Sorcerer, and we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis, playing Veosenia, the Tabaxi Gloomstalker Ranger Rogue. And Joel Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson the human battle master. Thank you for joining us once again. Of course, we here do so many other cool bits of content on the Dungeon Dudes YouTube channel that you can check out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes, where Kelly and I post new videos every other Tuesday and every Thursday covering everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for GMs. Check that out. You can also watch us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. Check us out from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. They go up every Friday. And you can also check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. And a big thank you, as always, off the top to all of our supporters out on Patreon. We'll have more details on how you can support the stream uh, at the end of the show as well. With that, let us return to find out the fate of Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now... Horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible, while simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war. The power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. Welcome back to the fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, we were in the midst of combat, coming back around to the top of the round, where... The eldritch being you see before you, deep beneath the catacombs of the Cathedral of St. Fiona, has unleashed a storm of psionic and contaminated energy that has damaged Sebastian and left Veo and Pluto both stunned. As you, um, as you feel your senses overwhelmed and your mind nearly shattered, uh, by the psychic barrage. Sebastian, you are in the middle of the um, the mausoleum of St. Fiona, where she has been la what, where, where her few bones have been laying to rest here. The rest of the chamber is completely in darkness, so beyond the illumination that you brought into the, the, the chamber, the dull glow of uh, the eyes of these creatures, before you is a lithe, lanky, winged demon, a strange, twisted mirror of the, own, of the transformation that you have taken on with the spell that you have cast. However, as we're now at the top of the round, um, Veo... Um, oh. You actually have an opportunity to snap out of this effect. Um, you are stunned, so your turn is consumed, but at the end of your turn, you do get a chance to repeat the saving throw, uh, the intelligence saving throw, to potentially snap out of this effect. Let's see how we do. Believe in you, Joe. No, a natural one. Good. Uh, We're starting off strong. <laughs> get them out of the way now. <laughs> yep. 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 Get uh, you know, just roll, roll out all the the poor rolls. Shake it out. Yep. Shake it out. Shake it out. <laughs> oh no, Jeff. So uh, you know, but that's we're off to a great start. Don't worry, I said I had it. This it's, does not predict but, how this battle the, will go. Under the, uh, <laughs> if that's an omen. Oh, man. No, not an no. omen. Oh, that's not an omen. That's Jill. Just she's like, you know what? I don't even need to be in this combat. Okay. You know? Well, we'll we'll see how 
how this works out for the rest of y'all. Okay, well, with that in mind, Pluto. So, so Veo, you will remain stunned uh, for another turn. Um, Pluto. You're stunned at the action that Pluto's going to make with his... Does a 10 do it? <laughs> no, it does not. Okay. It's okay, it's okay. So first, we're going to use Indomitable, my second use of Indomitable. Okay. You got to blow through all of your... All of your... Would a 17 do it? Yes, it will! Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yes, a 17. Um, gritting your teeth, it, th- you, calling on your indomitable reserves to um, c- wrench out of the psionic energy. You feel uh, your clarity restored. Ignatius and your sh- um, you because you were stunned. Ignatius was dropped to the ground, but you managed to pull yourself together. That's all you're going to be able to do this turn, but you are not stunned anymore. And I, I regain my composure, and I and I just start to look at my bearings, and I see Sebastian floating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, Sebastian, it is your turn. What are you? So, do? Sebastian. If, for those of you who do not recall, has cast a spell, a new spell, Draconic Transformation, where he, in his version, has taken on a shadowy, demonic form, uh, growing shadow wings and his sort of whole body wreathed in shadows that are swirling and his eyes glowing purple and his claw, his hands turning into shadowy talons as he lifts into the air to fight this demon. Um, his dog Reaper has also been summoned, mm-hmm. uh, which I cannot grab, but Monty, do you happen to remember which creature I summoned Reaper on? Was it the, I the believe, sp- but I believe it was the Eldritch being. Yeah. The spell casting mm-hmm. yeah. tentacle. Yeah, because then thing. he teleported away and then cast his uh, yeah yeah stun effect. So as as I'm claw battling in the air with this demon, Reaper is going to run up to the other Eldritch horror. Okay. And. I am going to twin cast um, Tasha's Mind Whip. So some of the shadowy energy lashes out from Sebastian and kind of creates this shadowy tether from my head, almost like horns coming out, and lashes into their heads. Okay. And I'm going to cast Tasha's Mind Whip. The creature that is within five feet of um, Reaper has disadvantage on the saving throw. Okay. Uh, which that disadvantage will negate its innate magic resistance. Uh, which I get a two. The other creature, the demon, has magic resistance, but I get a 13. Uh, 13 oh, yeah. is not going to do it. Um, okay, so the the s- tendrils of Tasha's Mind Whip, um, what is that going to do to them? So first, they are going to take eight so psychic damage each. Okay. And they uh, must choose... They cannot take reactions. Okay. And they must choose whether they get they take a move, an action, or a bonus action on their turn. Um, And with that, so as the tendrils lash out and kind of stun them in the head, I'm going to fly back to about here. And using my bonus action, I'm going to exhale my breath attack. So this shadowy plume of... of, um, what kind of damage is it? It's force uh, damage. I think it's force. Yeah, so this shadowy so cool. force exhales from my demonic form. Uh, I'm going to miss Reaper, but I'm going to hit the two of them. Okay, so saves from both, correct? 
Yes. Okay. So this is not. This is not. Is this? Does this count as a spell? Uh, yeah, it would be because it's caused by a spell. You gain the ability. Yeah. Okay. Us. Yeah. Fair. Um. So the demon. Uh. What What type of save is this? This is a dexterity saving throw, and the one creature still has disadvantage. The demon gets a twenty-five on its save. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. 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 Um, cool. Cool. And the um. The eldritch being gets um, a uh, a nineteen on its save. Ah, oh, okay. All do right, they cool. still take half damage on a? F- they they do still take half damage. Okay. Um, so that is going to be Thirty. Uh, well, half of thirty, so fifteen damage each. All right. Um, both of them have been uh, quite wounded, uh, but neither are yet bloodied. Um, but lots of damage on the board on both of them. All right. Uh, and I hover in the air and let out a demonic roar. How many of the um, the horrible bodies were destroyed in the <laughs> in the uh, uh, in-, in the the breath weapon. It was it a line or any... a cone, Sebastian? Uh it is a cone, I believe. It would have wiped out a whole bunch of them in that case. Yeah. 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 Kill those zombies. Okay. So um All right. The Eldritch Mutant, um, um, still nice under the session. effects of the Mind Whip. So it is, um, it's going to have to choose whether it gets a move, an action, a bonus action, or it gets only one of the three. Yeah. Okay. And they both failed. Okay. So it can't take a reaction either. So what it's going to do, um, with its turn, um, is... It, it hovers in the air and it begins to cast a spell. Um, and it makes the shape of a sphere with its hands. And you just hear this light popping noise in the, uh, in the, in the air, um, but nothing else. Counterspell. You're going to counterspell? Yes. Oh. Okay, uh, with what level spell slot? Oof, that's a good question. There's asking the real questions. Um, what do I got? What what can I do? Um, I'm going to use a fourth level spell slot. Okay, roll it. Roll it to see if you count on the spell. Does that does does adding it to fourth level add anything? If I still have to roll it? No, doesn't. Oh, uh, well, it's too late. I said I was going to use. Okay. Um, uh all right do i am i just rolling it's been a while since i've done this uh uh yep you just roll add your charisma modifier and you just have to beat the level of the spell that it's casting Ooh. okay i got a 22 okay so whatever spell it was casting did not happen <laughs> that was clutch. <laughs> is that gonna kill one of us? Okay, uh, so it is. Uh, it is stuck in place. The other creature, on the other hand, um, the demon. Um, well, it does not have any reach. Um, it does have a ranged attack, which uh, Sebastian. Um, it uh, it is going to use its glare um, on you, Pluto. Though no, um, and Pluto, I need a charisma saving throw. <laughs> Lucky for you, I lost more of my charisma, <laughs> my precious charisma, due to being bit by something earlier. Um. 
So Christmas saving throw? Yeah. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Um, ooh, I get a 15 with that minus two. So 17 turns into a 15. So the you needed a 16. So the <laughs> minus, gonna, the lucky, minus from I lucky? earlier actually... Yeah, yeah, you can lucky it. I need to. Let's just see what happens. So what I need, I need an 18. You At need least. a 16. I need, but you so, need but to roll I need an 18, 18 on, on the die. die. To roll an 18, yeah. 18 or 19, higher. or 20. You can do it. That's like no problem, right? Yeah, 15%. You're Pluto five. Jackson. <laughs> oh. I get a good old... No. <laughs> I get a five. Okay. So it turns um, into a three. The creature begins eating a small piece of your soul as it gets sucked out of your body. And uh, you take uh, 24 points of necrotic damage and your hit point maximum oh. is reduced by 24. Ah. <laughs> hey, that's my soul. <laughs> ah. Pluto's eyes begin to drain from their color. It becomes sort of transparent, like a milky white. And you can see his strength, like, like his muscles starting to deplete. Like you can see like a bit of them start to lose some of their, some of their splendor. Ooh. Well, with that, uh, locked in place by the Mind Whip, they're not doing too much moving. So, Veo, it is your turn. You are stunned, so I'm going to need a, ro uh, a roll to snap out of the stun. Come on. Four 14? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going up. At least. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mo moving up, moving up. Uh, so Pluto, it's it is your turn in that case. I I I I'm recently stunned. Um, I I've I'm I'm slow to pick up Ignatius off the floor. I can feel my strength leaving, like it's heavier than normal. Like there's something, like my legs are just not quite with me. But then I I make eye contact with the tentacle creature mm -hmm. as I slowly begin to make my way towards him and speed up and go faster and faster as I raise Ignatius above my head All right. and I cast the demon back into the does a 16 hit a 16 does hit and unfortunately I can't oh. take reaction so I can't shield it this is this is perfect. Thank you. Mind whip is such a good spell. Mind whip. Mind whip. Uh, Thirty damage. Uh, ow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, don't worry. I know. I know how that feels. <laughs> you say as you cut into it. <laughs> I know how this feels. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ooh, that's gonna hurt. Um, is he? holding anything uh he is not anymore he had a delirium crystal in his in it in, in its hand but currently okay, you know what i'm gonna make i'm gonna get him to make a strength saving throw all right dc 18 uh i fail <laughs> okay so he's gonna take an extra eight points of damage mm -hmm. and now he's prone and i will continue my assault <laughs> so when they're prone and they're beside me um, do I get advantage? Yes, you do. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Go, Pluto, go! Uh, like a 31 to hit. Oh. <laughs> so you knock the creature to the ground, and it slams against the ground, and you drive Ignatius into its back. Uh, 29 damage. Okay, it is bloodied now. Um, and I continue my assault on this awful creature. You stunned my friend. You tore a piece of my life force out of me. Oh, so close. Um, like a 33 to hit. Ugh. <laughs> almost, almost critting twice. Um, uh, another 30 damage. All right. It, it barely survives your vicious onslaught, but survive it does. Um, let me just quickly see, because if it's still alive, um, uh, 
I'm going to do... Um, I'm going to do uh, Distracting Strike. Okay. So on its last attack, it's going to take an extra. Let's see if this kills it. Oh, one damage. <laughs> Not enough, I'm afraid. <laughs> Darn it. Um, but the next attack against it is uh, with advantage. Okay. Sebastian. Sebastian, it is your turn. Uh, Reaper's going to circle around. Okay. So Reaper kind of pops into the Shadow Realm and pops back out on the other side. And you know what? I'm going to... Reaper's going to bite it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Reaper gets a. Uh... In... Wait, I guess double advantage. Now that it's back double to your advantage. turn, it can actually take it. It can actually take reactions again. I'm going to use one of my new spells. Um, uh oh. Yes, as a reaction. Um, I am going to vanish to the space between worlds. <laughs> ah! <laughs> no! Get back here! Can I counter spell? Uh, you can try. Uh, let me, let's just double check what what level is vanished to the space between well, worlds. Did you use counter spell? It hasn't been your turn yet, right? It is now my turn again. Oh, right now, yeah. That makes so. Sense. Yeah. So yeah, you, it would be back. Did we make vanish your, to the space between reaction. worlds? Did we? We haven't. I think our playtest feedback is that it should be a higher level spell. Uh, but uh, <laughs> that, but we aren't done playtesting. So what is it currently? What is it currently? Uh, it is currently a second level spell. Yeah. Well, it's countered. Okay. Uh, all right. I think I might be stuck here. <laughs> so as as it starts to tear open the fabric, Demon Sebastian, Dean Bastian, Seb. Anyway, uh, Seb Sebastian the demon uh, reaches out his claw and goes, no, and closes the rift. Oh. Um, and then he points a finger at the creature and Reaper jumps out of the shadows and attacks him um, with advantage. Mm hmm. Getting a 19 to hit. That's a hit. For 12 damage. I believe Reaper gets its prey. Yeah. Reaper grabs the creature and the portal that Reaper comes out of opens back up in the floor. And in a weird sort of eldritch scream, the creature gets dragged into Reaper's domain. <laughs> Yes. Does Reaper and disappear after the after the creature is destroyed? Yes. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, exhale my uh, breath attack as a bonus action, uh, avoiding Pluto. Okay. Appreciate that. Um, magic <laughs> resistance gives me a natural 20 on my saving throw. So I get a you 27 are. on my dex save. You're still going to take half damage Jeez. and you're going to like it. Jeez Louise. Lucky for you, this is a terrible roll. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to use Empowered Spell <laughs> to re-roll You know what I love? There's certain features things. where you know what happened, and anytime Sebastian uses Empowered Spell, it's because I feel like he rolled poorly. I mean, it makes sense, but it's just funny to hear. I'm going to use Empowered Spell. It was that bad, huh? It's still only a 24, so half of that, 12. 12. Two. Okay. Do you, it, wait, is firing the thing an action or a bonus action? Bonus action. Is commanding Reaper an action or a bonus action? Uh-oh. <gasps> That's a great uh -oh. question. Double. Or is it like a special skill? On its turn, it can move towards the target. Is summoning it a bonus? Oh, as a bonus action, you no, you you spend three sorcery points to magically summon the hound. 
But once it's summoned, on its turn, it moves towards its target. And it just attacks without requiring any action from you? Uh, on its turn, it can move only towards its target by the most direct route. It can use its action only to attack its, its target. The hound can make opportunity attacks, but only against the target. Yeah, there's nothing about me having to use anything other after oh, its sweet. summon. Yeah, then, then sweet. I think, you, I think we just don't roll initiative for it, right? It just yeah. goes on yeah. your turn. Yeah. yeah. Reaper's his own only... dog. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> amazing. Hound. That's amazing. Okay. So, yeah, I do, I do take a little bit of damage from that thing, then. And then what do you want to do with your action? Did I not use my action? I guess I counterspelled Reapered. Yeah, oh, you still got a full Breath action. Attack. Wow. <laughs> wow. I, <laughs> <laughs> because I counterspelled, can I not cast a full spell or is that? No, no, that doesn't apply here. I can cast a full spell. Um, Oh boy, I did not come prepared for this. Let's go ahead and mind whip it again. The tendril lashes out. Alrighty. Drum roll. Uh, it's going to be a 20 on the save and throw there for mind oh, whip. Oh, he's good. He's good. Yeah. Yeah. You only take half damage and suffer none of the other spells effects. That's fair. I, I tried. Hey, Joe. 11 hi. damage. Alrighty. Or half of 11. Joe, how are you looking on hit points there, buddy? Okay, are you, are um, you let me update it. Uh, oh, yeah. And that's even with a 24 hit point reduction to my maximum. I'm def I'm still bloodied, even even with that. Alrighty. Yep. Uh, yeah, it should be updated in um, roll 20. Um, sitting at a solid 39. Okay. Well, now I'm going to start making some attacks with this guy. This demon there, Joe, is going to come and bite you. No. Getting a 25 to hit. No. Um, yep. So this 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 thing's uh, bite does 5d12 necrotic damage. I don't know if I can. <laughs> uh, they so could all be one. 17. They could all be one. Five yeah. damage, Joe. It's fine. <laughs> no, not smile. That's all five four, damage. Forty-two on. necrotic damage. Oh, that takes me out. With a single bite, and it drinks deeply of your soul, and then it, uh, and then it lunges at Sebastian to claw you, Sebastian. I Pluto collapses. Uh, Sebastian, uh, I'm gonna get a twenty-seven to hit. Oh man, shield's not going to do much there. Uh, and the claw, Fly. the the claw also does a bunch of D10 damage. Fly, Sebastian, fly! fly I am Sebastian. flying. <laughs> Pluto, <laughs> no! It flies too. So, Sebastian, you're going to take 35 force damage. Yikes! And it's going to use its soul stealing gaze on you. I don't have a soul. <laughs> Well, actually, someone else has your soul. Make a so charisma. Your soul's still getting damaged. Just make a charisma it. saving throw. Yeah, you still have it, but someone else owns it. That's a good. Yeah. That's a. It's not yours after you die. All right, uh, twenty-one. Okay, so you don't take twenty-five necrotic damage. No. Uh, oh, and it's not even on. You take nothing on a half. All right. Um. Yeah, and you see the shadowy demon tantalizingly trying to draw out your soul to devour it. But it seems like, yeah, maybe you don't have that much of a soul to devour. Foolish demon. <laughs> There's no soul for you here. All right. I'm the demon. Veo, are you going to snap out of the stun? No guarantees. <laughs> ah, 16. You oh, no. are not stunned. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I thought but, I didn't make it. But that's your but that is your turn, I'm afraid. <laughs> Pluto. You just hear Ow! Mine. Death <laughs> saving throw there, Pluto. This is where boys become men. Courage reigns supreme. And I roll a five. <laughs> that's one failed death save. You gotta believe. 
Uh, Pluto twitches. You can see him muttering something to himself and he's in some kind of like mini coma and then he twitches and then he just stays there. Okay. Seems like he's trying to amp himself up. Sebastian, we're over to you, buddy. All right. I am going to first just... This menacing demon eyes you and it says, once you are unconscious on the ground, I will devour the souls of you and your friends and you will face a torment of agony in my belly. Um, yeah, about that. And I'm going to, you know what? Let's go for one last mind whip. Okay. Let's see how he rolls. I know he has advantage, but... Natural 20 with advantage. Well... Four, half of 14. Seven damage. Seven damage. And um, another saving throw against my breath attack. All right. 25 on the saving throw. <laughs> Your feeble magic mortal will do nothing to me. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I just rolled really well. So we'll... Um... Thirty-nine, half of thirty-nine. That does leave it bloodied. Nice job. Yeah, that was one of the highest. Th th those were all sixes, sevens, and eights. How are you, uh, how are you looking there, Sebastian? I'm I'm fine. I'm at fifty-eight. I'm good. Comes. Um, I got to mark off these spell slots and whatnot. I'm burning through them, but. Okay. I'm keeping I'm keeping this fight There's real. No tomorrow. The demon no tomorrow. brings its claw down upon you, Sebastian. Getting a 15 to hit. I cast shield as a shadowy shimmering force appears in front of me. It rears back with a bite, getting a 20 to hit. Uh it gets me on the on the other side. The bite shatters through the shield like glass breaking your your magic. 5d12 damage. We're okay. We're all right. So that's uh, 20, 32, mm -hmm. 38, plus, uh, plus 6, so 44 necrotic damage. I'm fine. Oh. And as, it, and as, it, it yeah. bites into your neck. And its eyes ah. glare into yours. Make a charisma saving throw. Ha, <laughs> fool. Charisma. Uh, that's going to be a 24. Okay, you, you don't have your soul sucked out. I glare back at him, and I'm like, we talked about this, demon. <laughs> okay. Veo, it is finally your turn. <laughs> All right, I am going to uh, do a little dash on my bonus action uh, to get me over to Pluto because I sit up from <laughs> being stunned and I see he's on the ground. So I make my way over to him and I shove a potion in his mouth. Um, Pluto, do you have potions on you? I, do, I, I have one um, superior... I just, Oh, do you want a superior? I can shove a super I have, superior if you want it. Or I have greater. I have, I have one superior that you can jam in me. All right. I see it on your belt. I grab it. I jam it in your mouth. Oh. Um, All righty. Pluto, and, you're back up. Go into it. That's, that's on 40, the, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I am on the lookout position. Oh. Is it, uh, 
Is it Pluto's turn? Uh, that's Veo's action to feed you a potion. So yeah, it is your turn, Pluto. Yeah. The demon, all it hears is the sliding of steel against the cold, dark ground. And I go, I ain't hear no bell. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And I, and I jump up on this rock that's just behind um, the demon as I stand between Veo and I crit. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. That's what I wanted last turn, so I would have stood up too, but I'll take uh, That's a finale. I mean, I hope. That uh, Ignatius. <laughs> Um, really quick math. Um, forty-seven damage. Oh man! So <laughs> I, I, you sprain to your feet, and Ignatius flares to life, biting deeply, and you hear Ignatius's righteous voice call out, "Drive back the darkness!" <laughs> And the holy I'm blare flail, uh, uh, flares with light as it collides with the shadow stuff of this demon. Um, as if this was Ignatius's purpose to destroy <laughs> entities <laughs> just like this. But the creature reeling from the blow, the shadow stuff still binds it together. I remove Ignatius. And I go, uh, and, and I, I raise it again as I, uh, uh, as I mumble to this awful demon, my blade is thirsty, and I get a 21 to hit. The bl- uh, that is a true strike with Ignatius. Uh, 25 damage. And finally, uh, my final attack uh, coming in with an 18 to hit. All three of those hit. How do you destroy this creature? Um, sort of like as I imagine as Ignatius is cleaving into its wounds, the, 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 the radiance is drawing out the light from it. So as the, the wounds start to bleed light and as I continue the assault, with mm-hmm. Ignatius, um, the demon start the, the shadow starts to disappear, and my helm is burning with this like radiance. The 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 light uh, shines through, and it begins to just sort of dissolve in front of me as yeah, I stand on the. Yeah, it just fades its- away, like like <laughs> just like light spilling into a darkened room. The creature fades, and I breathe in heavily. Thanks, Veo. Sebastian like lowers to the floor and the shadows all get sucked back into him and he looks over at you and he goes, show off. (laughs) Sebastian, you were shadow. You were shadow. What happened? I had that whole battle, and then you come out of nowhere and say some cool line. Like, what are you, the king of one-liners here? I am no king. I am a prince. I am the prince of one-liners. <laughs> that is my that is my title. It was pretty awesome. That Pluto. is my oath. It was um, pretty awesome. I, I, I actually, though, feel really... I don't really feel very strong. I feel really very pale. weak. Yeah, that demon, it bit me. It, he bit me. That's why I'm so mad. Oh, my neck. And he looked into my soul and he took a part of it, I think. I don't know what is a soul, but I don't feel like I have as much of it anymore. Are you guys okay? Is everybody okay? That affected me. Yeah. Um, I feel like I might feeling be... Feeling just a little bit more grumpy than usual and a little <laughs> bit less friendly towards everyone. I'm just... Mm. I need a nap is what I need and a snack. And I think we should burn all these bodies. I'm just saying. 
Yeah, probably. Uh, do you think um, they'll be okay I, with that? <laughs> I, <laughs> I hold my hand against the helm and I want to remove one of the... I believe I'm, it is... I can press the digitate of Yeah, I put my hand on your hand and I'm like, Pluto, I, I can make fire. <laughs> yeah. So can I. Yeah, but... Don't waste it. <laughs> <laughs> and I... <laughs> Pluto, like, I can do it, I can do it like, with minimal effort. You don't need to use resources. I go over well, and I make a bonfire on top. But of then I, I, I actually like... pull out a flint and tinder, and I begin <laughs> to strike it against the crown. And, and, and about four <laughs> minutes imagine. later, while you're doing that, I walk over and look at the pile of bodies, and Does it bursts have into any flames. Kindling? Does anyone have any kindling? Do you have any... <laughs> Do you have any, like, cotton? I need some cotton. Does anyone have any cotton? <laughs> um, I help Pluto. Yeah, can uh, you just light my right. little fire on fire start it up? I do. Yes. I light your little fire on fire. All, all told, there, there are dozens of corpses here. Um... As you light the fires, um, you can see that in the one of the um, crypts off of the main mausoleum, the walls have been broken in, and there is a massive rent in the floor, a cavernous opening that stretches down into the darkness. Sorry, where is that? So in the the northern uh, area um, of the mm. the chamber here, um, there is a, a set of additional crypts off the off the main mausoleum of of Saint Fiona, and here there has been a breakthrough um, in the in the baseboards. Oh, sorry, the the flagstones of the uh, catacombs uh, that is a tunnel that has been dug up and the the flagstones are shattered and cracked and broken but the tunnel is perfectly cylindrical hmm. um it the tunnel itself is about 10 feet in diameter um and it is a perfect cylinder that extends past your dark vision can see that straight down um Approaching the tunnel, can I surmise if it was magical, animal, or mechanical in its creation? Hmm. Um, what does Sebastian... Um, unless you have pro uh, proficiency in, like, masonry or stonework, uh, give me an investigation check, but that'll get... But without any additional proficiency, what you can figure out might be limited. I have Mason's tools, and remember, I'm a Mason. Huh. I mean, true, maybe we can work together. Um, My name is Pluto. <laughs> I get a uh, 20. Pluto. All right, Pluto, give me a check. Add your proficiency modifier to this one. Um, and with the Mason's tools, you and Sebastian can talk it over. I think we're rocking... Um, I think I got a 13. Okay. Um, wasn't great. The tunnel cuts past the foundation of the, um, it cuts past the foundation stones and concrete of the crypt and extends into the earth and clay itself. And so the clay and rock that gives way after the construction as you know, the this area of um, of Liberio is effectively an um, a artificial landmass. So it very quickly goes into sediment, and if you examine further, you you actually smell that smell of seawater and clay and rock um whatever dug this was not a beast or a machine 
Um, it's too perfect for that. It's almost as if someone might have used magic to excavate or destroy the material as they went along. So again, I'm still saying the suspect is a necromancer at this point. We have raised dead. We have uh, summoned demons, perhaps. We have magically carved tunnels into the basement. I do think at this point, though, it's best that we go share our findings with the paladins. Perhaps they can actually do their jobs and help us look into this. Do we, do we have a way of at least blocking this until we bring them down? I hold out my hand and I cast Mold Earth and five feet of rock lump up in front of it. Yeah, you could use Mold Earth to seal the hole. All right. I, I Yeah, so it takes me a few minutes, but I, I, I pile up the debris to just seal the entrance loosely just so that nothing else comes in, but I would... I'll, I'll probably excavate it once we get. While you're doing it, I can I can help too. I can push some big rocks over. Okay. <laughs> I, I admire like your <laughs> strength, Pluto. I you know it's I, it's good. Thank you. It, it I, does, I, back I, I especially push snacks. the ones you're pushing. Beyond this, it does not look like the actual bones of any of the interred paladins and clerics were disturbed. Hmm. The um, the actual sarcophagus that houses St. Fiona's remains seems to be undisturbed. While there is some damage to the structure of the, of the catacombs themselves, um, some of this, most of it looks like it is the, the result of ancient damage from earthquakes long ago. Uh, Liberio does get hit by earthquakes, um, and it does suffer from the fact that it is on an artificial island so there the damage to the catacombs has accrued over the years but the actual uh, the actual um people who are buried here it doesn't appear that they were used um e even as you go through the the niches where uh where the remain the earthly remains of paladins and clerics are what what's there are skeletal remains but these undead creatures that you destroyed and the bodies that were not animate here, um, these creatures, on the other hand, were were flesh. Um, the f uh, and if you had to guess, probably recently deceased. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, and the only thing that you notice uh, that uh, through searching through is that. Um, as you you burn the bodies um, and and find any of the markings, um, the sailors' tattoos are a recurring theme that you notice on on the corpses. Several several of them. You can each roll me a perception check. Twenty. Three. Fifteen. Vale, you notice this. The tattoos, many of the sailors have a tattoo on their left shoulders that is the symbol of a bird's skull. Um, Did you notice there's like an an av aviary kind of theme going on here? Yeah, like the the it might be like the the skull of a um of a of like a sparrow or um perhaps like a a, a, a sparrow hawk of uh, some some kind. Like it's more of like a songbird skull than a predatory bird skull. Perhaps it's a crow skull. I know you just said it wasn't, but, you know. Sebastian thinks it's a crow skull. I know birds pretty well, and they have a bit longer beaks. This one's a little bit shorter. You can tell by, you know, the, the boning and the... It's just sparrow, likely. Or at least a variation. Maybe finch. Who knows? It might mean that 
all of these sailors are from the same ship or perhaps part of the same guild. Yeah. Uh, now, we don't live here, so maybe asking the people who do, maybe uh, Portia? Is it Portia? Or maybe uh, Isabella Ezio might mm. know a little bit more about the... True. If it was... If they were all from the same ship, this the number of bodies would mean that an entire crew of a sailing vessel was murdered. Yes. <laughs> I think that's what happened. That's what I'm that's what I'm wondering. Did an entire crew go missing? Did a Someone's got to know. This this many bodies with the same tattoos, it doesn't make sense that someone wouldn't notice. Well, what was the uh, paladin's name? L L Leonard? Lewis. Lewis. <laughs> Let's go blame this all on Lewis, shall it's we? It's time for Lewis to get a talking Lewis. to. Who didn't okay. finish their ritual spells? As you, uh, um, as you head back up um, out of the crypts, um, the... Ooh, <laughs> They changed the password on us uh, to get out. No, no, they 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 haven't changed the password uh, bang, 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 on bang, you or bang, anything bang. like that. Like, Not Fiona at all. 963. No. Fiona 963. Um, High Flamekeeper Portia greets you, and she immediately can see that something happened, and you see the lo a grave look wash over her face. She says, "What happened?" Well, uh, there was some trouble down there. Um, so all those safety nets you put in and all that hard work. You had demons in your basement? Yep. Look at my neck. Look at that. Look at that. Light of the flame. How did this happen? Are the wards in the crypt still in place? What of our dead? Uh, the dead are still intact, but there are new dead, and they're very scary, and your wards are not in place, and there's a giant tunnel into the crypts. So somebody was attempting a zombified attack. But hold on, on our meeting. Portia, y you you think there were wards down there? There were wards. They weren't operational. There may have been an incident involving your wards. I mean, when we went down there, we felt that they, it wasn't the same as up top. No, yeah. you're the... The forbidden spells that are woven over the crypts are separate from those over the upsta uh, over upstairs. But there were none downstairs. Right? That That means that someone would have had to have unbound them. It would have taken an, a powerful dark mage to undo that. I mean, everything about this screams dark mage, and I, I should know. I, uh, I've had my fair share of experience with dark mages. Um, you had a few run-ins. A few run-ins. I, I live very closely with one. Um, so, zombies. We're talking necromancy. Um, we're talking magically created tunnels we're talking dismantling your wards we're talking summoning demons um all things that you know can be very helpful in the right circumstances but not these circumstances and this wouldn't have just been done overnight this has taken some time and planning She, she rubs her, her hand over her face, and you can see that there is both, like, the expression on her face is both one of, she, the palpable sense that a sacred space has been violated, but also one of embarrassment that, and she, she says, protecting this place was my responsibility. 
It was the knight's responsibility. And we failed. Everybody makes mistakes. I must gather my acolytes, and we need to make, make this right as quickly as we can. We should take you down and at least show you what we've found. If it's anybody's fault, I, I don't put the blame on yourself. Put it on Lewis. Only. 100%. 100% Lewis's fault. Mm. Um, but we were about to hold a meeting in here with some of the most important people from several nations in our continent. And somebody wanted to do something terrible at that meeting. And we need to figure out who. The meeting will probably have to go on. This investigation may go past when the meeting is. So I'm wondering, we, we need we need people on this. We need guards everywhere. And yes. I mean, I don't need to attend the meeting. I can personally start investigating this. I'm definitely attending the meeting. Maybe we can begin the... We can start this investigation and then um, if we need to break off for the meeting, but maybe the meeting needs to be paused um, due to safety. I think we need I mean, to sort we, this out first, for sure. We can't have we can't have Wilhelm here um, with the threat of uh, the assassins, uh, a potential. You keep saying necromancer like. Ooh. Yeah, I really don't want to have to have give my life again to protect thing, him against things we should be protecting him against. The thing is, I don't know who our enemies are that are, that are capable of doing this. This doesn't feel like the Queen of Thieves. This doesn't feel like... You know who like, it does feel like? Oscar Yorin. But he Oscar said, Yorin blew up. Did he? He blew up, right? We saw him explode. He broke the staff. And then there was just... There was there was just this like there was nothing blank. left. Yeah, I am eighty six percent sure we killed Oscar Yorn. But this is totally his vibe. Oscar Yorn's, I don't know. That's that's so season one. <laughs> <laughs> Could he have a uh, secret apprentice that we didn't know about? There's other dark wizards. I don't know. So someone found his journal. He was Academy. like, I'm going to pick up where he left off. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I'm not going to start assuming it's Oscar Yorn until I find proof of that. It, it seems seems ridiculous. It the, We have no beef with the Pale Man. The Pale Man wouldn't leave Drakenheim. That's the other thing is this is this is here in Liberia. Hmm. Flamekeeper Portia says, Me, my acolytes, and the knights need to attend to this immediately. If if the three of you wish to report to the others and decide what is to be done, we had every preparation in place to secure the cathedral for this meeting. And now that we know that this was going to happen, we will redouble our efforts. But you, but you should send word and find out what the plan is for your your me your meeting because if the Cathedral of Saint Fiona is the safest and most secure place in Liberio, next the the only place that would be any safer would be the Enigma Ziggurat. Well, it looks like your safest place has been infiltrated, and even with your amazing efforts, you still had to call in the three of us, the uh, cathedral investigators. The cathedral inspectors were the cathedral inspectors. I don't think they called us. <laughs> we storm we in. Just, you just called on the cathedral up. inspectors, and we <laughs> came and found the issues <laughs> with your... We should at least show you where the hole is that we plugged, because that's important. Certainly. With that, um, the High Flame Keeper follows you into the crypts, 
and you show her the situation going through the creatures that was found and she has a gasp of horror when she sees of course the eldritch being was consumed by reaper and the demon Oops. was destroyed by ignatius so all that remains are the the bodies of the sailors that you had started to burn which unfortunately burning bodies underground fills the entire chamber with tons of smoke Oops. um uh so it's a so uh, the the high flame keeper immediately instructs the other flame uh, the other flame keepers to um, begin moving the bodies out of the cathedral so that they can be properly cremated. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm not an expert in cremation. I'm sorry. I want to ask her about the tattoo. Um, Have you seen this before? Is this any anything you could tell me about? I. I, I don't you it, it, it does seem like these people were all part of the same group but you would need to ask around the harbor mm. uh, to to get any sense of, of that the the harbor master and anchor citadel do maintain quite good records of, of what comes in and out of of, of Liberio so there is a role of all the ships that dock and when they leave mm. and and go so if you do if you do head down to the harbor you would be able to find that find out at least if any ships have gone missing or have been moored for longer than expected can we trust you to keep this place safe in the meantime yes i will redouble all the efforts now that we know we we didn't suspect anything like this could ever happen but now that we know will be vigilant. If you do want to move ahead with having the meeting here, we will make sure that it is safe to do so. And I will check every, every ward and every safety and reinstate them with all the magic I can muster to make sure that it is safe. If you need any help, please let us know. I'm sure there are multiple parties here that want to make sure that this place stays safe including the knights of the silver order and uh and the jacksons yeah we're Very pretty invested well. and the crows <laughs> who would you like to report to now that you finished up here um the sick bay the medical tent <laughs> <laughs> let's yeah. go should we go see let's just go uh... sit down somewhere just for a minute mm -hmm. catch our breath figure I, I, out why i'm not as charming as i used to be I, like who who is there to report to who's here in liberio i'm kind of drawing a blank well i think we should oh go ahead currently the other groups that are coming in so the representatives of the silver order and wilhelm and venus joplin they are originally the, the meeting was supposed to be tomorrow mm -hmm. right so they're all camped out and they were all going to make their way into the city tonight to attend uh and come in to have the meeting that was was planned so all the arrangements have been made so calling things off is potentially an option but that is going to delay things uh pardon me you would want to you would need to consult either with with wilhelm and the the others or per perhaps isabella ezio uh or even sending a messenger going to meet with the other leaders um it's up to you to decide i think we at least need to send a letter to wilhelm to let him know what happened yeah Okay, here's the question. When like when do we need to be like washed and ready to have this meeting? Like when's this meeting happening? What's our ETA? It would be tomorrow, like first thing tomorrow essentially. So what if we just go take a short rest, get a little bit of something to eat, and we go clean up the problem. And then there's no problem for tomorrow. Well, that would be ideal. We should we should maybe send a message to Wilhelm uh, and the other leaders, let them know 
but let them know that we're investigating it. Mm. Yeah, let and, know and that we, we can get it fixed. Now? Yeah, at least we know of the problem, so there shouldn't be any more problems with the venue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we've, uh, we've, we've had to contact the catering and tell them to hold off uh, but for a little bit. What's, what's interesting, Pluto, you, you need to be part of this Gasconade. Veo, you do too. Yep. So really, the, the three people that are available to go off and investigate are Sebastian, myself, Rudy and Wrath. You would, you would think to bring those those two along with you, and and maybe get. And what we we go just just make sure that Wilhelm's okay, and well, we don't have to part ways or anything. But once the Gasconade starts, you two will like Pluto. You by all means need to be there. It's your. It's your duel. Mm. I know. Um, I, just love, I just love killing. That so said, much. Sebastian. Sebastian's fate is a is a, a part of that duel. So, uh, yeah, but they're, they're... is it really? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. That's fair. Sebastian's not worried. It's Sebastian's flattered. It's it's not. I don't think. Is it timely? I guess the question is: Can it wait? How long are, is the Gasconade? Usually, how long do Gasconades go? On I mean, for? the the Gasconade could be as long as it needs to be, but it's also the fact that there is finalizing the any negotiations with the Silver Order, and the fact that representatives of the highest levels of of uh, of rulership of all the nations are going to be at this meeting. So, um, it, it's it, it's a very important people will be gathered in one place together. And so whether, Sebastian, you want to be part of those conversations or not is really up to you. No, I should be. I just, uh, well, then that gives us one sleepless night to investigate and solve this mystery. Wait, what time is it during the day now? Um, roll a d12. Four. Four, uh, so we will say that it is four in the afternoon. I mean, we could rest now. We can get this done before dinner. And then have a midnight investigation. <laughs> or do you yeah, think go now? Short rest? No, 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 short rest and then... Short, uh, short rest, sh well, mm, lo long rest? Long rest and then all nighter. Yeah. Oh yeah, you wanna you wanna party. <laughs> One last go before the gas can aid. So we would. I mean, and then go go like go down into the crypts to fight an undead. You said like a necromancer. At, well, at midnight. first first we well, need first to go to the docks and ask about the sparrow because you see we're, we're we kind of finished up in the crypts. We could follow the tunnel and see where it goes, but oh, I'm yeah. worried it just goes to water yeah um i think the sparrow tattoos are the best we have a lead Eat. with the sparrow tattoos and if it leads us back underground then we'll just come back to the crypts and go dig around in the tunnels but w the harbor seems like a good place to start an investigation hmm. but i i won't lie i uh used a lot of my magical energy to keep you two alive uh, during that little bit there, and uh, I might need a nappy nap. Yeah, I'm sore. You tired? You tired? I'm pretty sleepy, Pluto. Um, Feeling extra yeah, non-charismatic. I don't even know if that comes back. I don't Pluto, I, I would heal faster if you could be my big spoon. <laughs> sure. <laughs> cool. Um, if, you, if you guys do want to take a, 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 sh a short rest, at least of an hour, have some supper, um, the, the hit point reduction, the, the penalty, uh, that you have, um, from the, um, the charisma damage from before, um, that goes away. Uh, let me just check if it goes away on a short rest. Well, I, I do think we want to take a long rest. Can, can we push yeah. a long rest? Can we, can we long rest now and then investigate the docks at night 
Um, ships come in at night. Do they go to the go to the 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 local watering hole? Oh, we're yeah. on the night shift tonight. <laughs> if if you want to take a long rest now, so technically speaking, you can only benefit from a long rest once in a twenty four hour period. So you would have already rested, like you would have. So the the answer is if you. The, you're not going to be able to take a long rest and benefit from it until tonight, right? Mm. Like okay, so we actual have to take a short actual rest. bedtime. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, um, so you can take a short rest and regain some hit points, and the reductions to your ability scores and hit point maximums will go away on a short rest. But if you want to take a long rest, you're going to need to uh, settle in for the night. Well, no have the turntables. Okay. Um, are you okay with that, uh, Sebastian? Wait, I'm yeah. going to be uh, less helpful than I was in that last combat for any future things that we run into, but I will still be good. Well, we can go so far, and maybe we won't take as many risks, knowing that we're not at full strength. Um, I never take risks. We can at least risks. get some information and do some investigating. Mm. Yeah. All right. Okay, yeah, let's do a short rest. Okay. Let's do a short rest. Where are you going to take that short rest? Just at the cathedral? Yeah. We're okay. just going to patch ourselves up. Take a quick nap. All right. Uh, certainly. Uh, well, then I think that that is appropriate break for us to take our real life break. So we'll be back in 15 minutes. And we are back from our short rest. We have restocked on all of our consumables and we're going to play some more D&D. So as Veo, Sebastian, and Paluto patch up their wounds and rest at the um, and rest up from the battles beneath the Cathedral of Saint Fiona, um, did any of you have um, as you rest up though? Um, before you spend any hit dice, High Flame Keeper Portia comes and says, "Here, let me tend to your wounds." And she casts healing spells on all of you to restore your hit points, so you don't need to uh, spend oh. any hit dice. Thank you, Portia. That's uh, very kind. Uh, Sebastian looks a little uneasy about having holy magic cast on him, but it goes well. He's Damn. he's happy about it. <laughs> Thank you, Portia. I. Uh... I just try to do what's right by Ignatius. And uh, mm. I just love killing demons. And what we saw down there was monstrous. And it has no place uh, within these walls or the basements of these walls. And uh, we're going to continue to figure out what's going on down there. And uh, I, think we can, mm. I think we can help you drive this evil from... From I your, from your land. I wanted to offer my assistance in finding out what happened here. Some of the bodies of those who died were still relatively intact despite your attempts to do otherwise. I can commune with what remains of their bodies, and we can speak with them, if you wish. Uh, yeah, nothing bad's ever come from talking to the dead. Isn't that like something that? What? Didn't you do that? <laughs> uh, I talked to my mom. Can you eat a lot of towels? <laughs> yeah, I wonder. Yeah, if that's. Why is that bad? I'm just I'm sure your mm. small just intestines purely are not from in a good digestive position. Point of view. Yeah. <laughs> the but. we may ask five questions of one of these uh, of one of the the deceased. There are many of them, so of course if you wanted to try asking more questions of them but be aware that 
sometimes the dead, especially those that have been trans faced such a horrific transformation into undeath, they can be a little scattered. Mm. Um, we, you do not commune <clears throat> with the soul of the departed directly. It is more like the impression that they left behind on their earthly remains. If you wish, we can cast the spell and I can assist you. Um, that sounds good. Guys, quick huddle. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Should we like stick to like serious questions? Like, should we should we try to investigate? Should I avoid questions like who's cuter, Sebastian or Pluto? What what are we thinking? So the answer to that is Veo. We already know that. Yeah. Out of Sebastian and Pluto, Veo's the cutest. Okay, no, but what what questions can we ask? It's because of the fur. It's definitely because of the fur. I mean, the fur does give you this like natural adorableness. That I I, is that is that okay to say? I think serious question. Yes, it is serious questions because it will help dial down I think the amount of time because we are on a time limit to get to the <laughs> meeting uh, what if we Is ask it- stuff that's like um, relevant we know they're probably sailors what if we ask something like what ship do you serve oh. uh, what like, ship do you, you serve know, that's good like yeah stuff that yeah, like yeah, really yeah. like lasts on them um, what about uh, like? Can we ask them how did you die? Maybe, like, but the last thing you remember. What's the last? Yeah, what's the last thing you remember? I like that. I like okay. That. Um, um, who was your captain? Yeah. Or on what ship did you serve? I guess we can no, answer no, that no, ourselves because they might be ambiguous. We need mm, to figure mm. out because if if we Some figure out the questions. captain's name, the captain name might lead us to where unless they we're were to the last captain. stationed. Um. Oh, what about um? When did you arrive in Liberia? Like, how long have they been here? How long were you in Liberia for? Or maybe, do you know where you are? Is that is that relevant? Well, we know where they are. But did they know? Why would? <laughs> but we don't care anymore. I think I think that's a good group well, of questions. Unless they were killed not in Liberio, so maybe they need to we that, need to know where they were killed. That so might maybe just asking them, do you know where you are, or like where, like, and if they say Liberio, we can then follow that up with how long, like, when did you arrive in Liberio? Because they might say something like random, and then in which go, case oh. we know that they were killed somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Where mm. are you? Um, but ask them like potentially depending on their answers like what happened with your crew we have five questions I think we have five-ish uh, you, let's Sebastian, all right. that's, actually would don't you, feel very personable right now so I think you should lead this one oh, okay I okay. don't feel like social you know I feel like Portia, I think we're ready to talk to the dead. She she brings you to one of the chambers that was off of the crypts that you passed by was a chamber that was used for preparing bodies. And she has lain one of the more intact corpses there um, and begins casting the spell. The magic flows through the body and the semblance of life falls into the face which you can see there's a small look of realization over the eyes as they open up once more and the mouth begins to move high flame keeper portia says what is your first question what was our first question ship or their captain i don't know the ship Um, or the captain what ship did you serve on sailor My ship was the ill-fated Finch. Write that down. Write that down. Finch. Finch. Ill-fated Finch. Who was your captain? Captain Grigori Highsail of Dransmond. Dransmond. Why 
What's the last thing you remember? We were coming into harbor a day out of the barrio crew was feeling sick hmm oh boy guys do we ask how he like now I'm wondering I mean, if he how died. Did, how did how did you get here, or do you know where you are? Like something to try to what we're trying to I think do is like get a sense of like how he got to like the basement. Also, I might ask what he was transporting because if it's sure. sure, yeah. What what were you bringing into Liberia? Bringing delirium. And a few passengers. Oh, what passengers? Who were the passengers? Bunch of bunch of apothecaries from Altbrook. That's five questions. So, is it? That was one, two. Yeah, that was five. I think Yay. I counted five. So, does he go back to sleep? <laughs> sleep. Um, <laughs> so, a long sleep. So, he came from Dransmond heading towards Liberio. They were transporting delirium which is already problematic mm -hmm. as well as a group of apothecaries the crew fell ill and it was on the ship the finch the finch and, and the, we the have the captain was something high sail Ill-fated finch. we need the manifest from captain high sails ship to gather the names of these apothecaries because they would have had to register as Either, passengers yeah leaving Dransmond, or if i guess they never made it to liberio like that's something we could check we could see if they were supposed to come to liberio and they never made it or did they make it and then something you else remember happened? they something might have happened and it still made it but who knows it still made it but the crew may not have yeah so we, <sighs> maybe we go down to the harbor uh, talk to the harbor master and ask about the uh, the finch. Guys, this is bad news. It sounds like we're uh, dealing with some of those sleazy apothecaries. Have you heard of these guys? What? All I know is that I'm a potion inspector, <laughs> and I know how to. <laughs> yeah, <break> apothecaries. <laughs> they like. They're like ah. Let's skirt around the rules and like I don't know. Like you. No. Worse, like bad me. Yeah, that's actually you. Like oh. you're that. No, like they get. They're the type. They're the type that would get like expelled from the academy. You know. <laughs> Hold on. Like you. No, yeah, but this. not re. Guys, you're you're blowing this out of proportion. Okay. No. <laughs> Sebastian, are you an apothecary? Listen, I would never ever be an apothecary. Okay. I also have a side question. Yes. What's an apothecary? Oh, um, they're kind of like, they like to do magic, but they like to pretend that they do it smarter than sorcerers and wizards. They're like, oh, we study random facts of the world and therefore can make poison. I don't know, they're I, weird. I think most of you would, would know that Typically, an apothecary is thought of as, as a, a, a practitioner of medicine that rather rather than knowing that apothecary, like as in the apothecary class, right, that we've designed, like most, most people would think, oh, an apothecary is like a doctor or a healer of some kind. Hmm. Yeah. Wait, so they had healers. They had this the boat, boat with delirium. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think these apothecaries were healers. 
is what I'm saying. So oh. apothecaries know how to mess with medicine, but they can also know secrets to necromancy. Yeah, there's oh. this like uh, doctor in uh, in Caspia that poisoned a bunch of people, and it was totally by accident. But <laughs> um, like he just didn't, he just he wasn't paying attention to like the mixtures. What's... Is that like that? But like more menacing. Was that the Caspian Doctor Frankenstein? <laughs> You've heard? You've heard of his work? Yeah, he was he was uh, a bit of a reputation that one. Yeah, it's uh, it was well known. I mean, he said it was by accident, but people had their suspicions. Hmm. Anyway, it sounds like we're not looking for a necromancer, but possibly a group of apothecaries. Let's well, see whatever it was. if we can meet up with them and find that manifest before we they were start bodies, making any right? assumptions. They could be good apothecaries, like actual healers. We don't know. True. Uh, Portia, thank you very much. This has been very helpful. Are you going to clean this up? <laughs> I referenced the dead body on the slide. Yes, we will make sure that they are given their last rites and, se- and sent properly to whatever hereafter they seek. Make a Lewis mop the floors. Yeah. Veo, you might be That's right. We might be jumping to conclusions, but as we head to the docks, let's keep an open mind that these apothecaries may not be behind this, but they might still be alive and might know something. Hmm. Yes. And should we hurt them for information? Yeah, beat up the nerds and take their homework. We've Something never like been that. good at that, though. I just have to, like, I'm trying to be more respectful of people from different backgrounds. But also, like, if they're summoning demons, Ignatius wants to hurt them. <laughs> and we all do. And And Ignatius is yelling at me right now. Trust me, Pluto, I have every reason to hate demons as much as you do. You kind of looked like a demon a little bit ago. Yeah, but that's my inner demons. Those are different. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's more soulful. Uh, as you leave the cathedral, you can see a rather embarrassed looking Lewis um, <laughs> resp- being responsible for hauling the dead uh, out to be properly <laughs> um, uh, laid to rest. Um, I guess. I guess will we head to the docks now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that yeah. sounds like a, an appropriate next step. Mm-hmm. Good investigation. Liberio's docks um, comprise basically the entire southern end of the city, the southern shore of the city, and in fact, even the docks extend up into the canals systems. But with asking around and, and a couple directions, you're able to. Uh, get a reference to the the port authority and the harbor master's office, um, where uh, the um, the port master uh, Casilda Calento oversees um, the comings and goings of every ship that docks in Liberio. Um, Casilda, um, the the port authority is a stone building uh, on the edge of one of the piers. Um, that is not uh, that is in the shadow of um, Anchor Citadel, which is where the proper fleet of Liberio's Armada docks. And as you come out to the harbor of Liberio, it is a bustling port with hundreds of piers and hundreds of ships. And one of the things that strikes you immediately is that the port at Liberio is so busy that ships moor out on the water and may and and as you as you ask around uh you learn that it's not uncommon for a ship to have to moor and lay anchor outside um like not at the docks and wait its turn to actually dock in Liberio because the port is so busy. And so sometimes the sometimes ships will have to moor out there for upwards of a week before they're actually able to dock at port uh, and, uh, and, and unload their cargo. So 
th this is why you actually will see um, sailors coming out on smaller rowboats um, and go and going coming and going down through through the harbor. Um, and so as you pass all the ships that are unloading their cargo and all the cranes to the stone building of, of the, the uh, Liberio Port Authority, um, there is a it is insanely busy um, with um, so because, again, the ships that when they come up and dock, there are cranes that are built all along. And the, these these cranes are um ingenious m machines because they reach out over and can unload cargo from the ships but the cranes are operated by um a couple um people running on a hamster wheel um that, that is like, like basically like a big wheel that someone runs in that hoists the crane up up because like they, there's there's no engineering to it otherwise right so someone will run on it and that will turn the crane and and pull the chains up and so they can unload extremely heavy cargo using this human powered uh system <laughs> Pluto Pluto <laughs> how much you want to bet that I could be you in hauling the thing in the in the wheel. At the academy, we hoist things using magic. What is this so manual I, labor? What? I I do not shy away from a challenge, <laughs> although it might be literally built for you. Uh, I would love to race you in the circle of lifting, <laughs> the sphere of lifting, the the wheel of lifting. As I go to investigate, Pluto and Veo start a hour-long race on a hamster wheel. Um, <laughs> fortunately, I'm to use my arms uh, um, as you as you come in to the the Port Authority offices, um, there is a line going out the door of the Port Authority. <laughs> of of um of about another 10 ship captains all lined up several of them with their arms crossed um all of them are, are usually holding some kind of shipping manifest or, or 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 ledgers or logs and several of them are tapping their feet waiting sebastian you wait in line we'll do the hamster wheel what what was the name of the captain we'll see again see you in an hour. uh gregory high sail I just, I'm just, I'm gonna give this a shot. As I stand adjacent to the line, I, I look, I look out at it, and I yell, "Gregory, high, high sail!" I'm looking for a Gregor, Gregory high sail. Has anybody seen or heard of a Gregory high sail? All right, roll me a d6. I got a one. One of the sailors. A look of pure anger and rage comes over the uh, one one of the he's this massive man about almost seven feet tall with a huge br uh, bushy beard um, and an eye patch over one eye and a peg leg and a hook for a hand and he reaches forward with this big meaty fist he's almost like an ogre and he grabs you and he says where is he Grigori High Sail owes me 2,000 gold pieces. You're going to bring me to him, little scrawny mage. And he holds uh, the hook up to your nose. And without, with the hook in my nose and being lifted off the ground, I respond and say, Sir, have you ever picked a fight with a mage before? I have burned down about 20 paladins in a split second, so I would be careful where you point that hook. Also, if you were paying attention, I was asking for the whereabouts of the same person you're looking for. <laughs> so if you want to use your noggin and think about it for more than a second, then you can get your meaty fist off of me and we can maybe try to find out where he is together. Any information you have and any information I have might be able to help us solve the mystery and you can get your money and we can get our man. Um, give me an intimidation check. Uh, that's going to be a 29. You see the look of anger, um, 
and the the logic that you employed in your intimidation seems to have touched a nerve with this with this angry angry man um and he says oh get away from me with that logic ah! <laughs> Uh, all right, I'm sorry. Let my anger get the better of Captain Angron, but <laughs> you you find me that Grigori high sail, and I'll tear him a new butthole. I will be sure to let him know that a new butthole is in order from you as soon as I find him. Mm. Mm. That high sail. Ugh. When did you last see this high sail? Oh, must have been last time he sailed out from da down here. Maybe six months ago. Six months ago? Yeah. He it... he bet me in several hands of cards. And he owes me big time. He said he was going to come ba back next time with a big haul. Real big haul. Pay me back, and then some. Did he say when he was planning to be back? Uh, he seems late on his arrival. Um, any, any? Did he give you any indication when he was expected to arrive? No, he must be hiding. I seen his ship out there moored out on, on, on the water. Yeah, yeah, he really is biding his time. He knows that as soon as he comes ashore, I'm gonna rip him in half. I'll just pull his spine out his mouth and then feed him his own gullet. Uh, in order to do that, we're gonna have to find him. Which ship is it out there? I, I like lean up against him and like I'm pointing at him. Like, which ship was it that, that was his? He point points out, see that one? That great galleon over there, that's yeah. the ill-fated Finch. That's his ship. Just, uh, I knew he'd be here. I've been waiting for him. Oh, uh, yeah. They came into harbor about two days ago. Mm. Two days ago. Hmm. And they've been sitting out there for the whole two days? I assure you, this man's butthole and spine uh, should be very afraid of you, sir. Well, it's, uh, it's probably his poor crew has got to wait for another couple days to unload their cargo, but usually the captains come ashore, report in to the Port Authority. That's what I'm waiting for right now, but I've been waiting for him. Let's rip him apart. Well, I can assure you that the crew has, um, they're doing great. Oh, he's got a fine crew, fine, fine group of lads and lassies. I tell tell you, tell you that a lot of them have beautiful, beautiful families back home in Westermar. Met a few of them, of course. <laughs> I'm sure they're all dying to get home to their families. Well, Sebastian, you've been... you good? You good over there? We're running. I'm Hello. great. <laughs> <laughs> it's going really well, guys. I made a new friend. <laughs> yeah. I feel an agility on the wheel. High Sail and the Finch had had a pretty lucrative run of it. They, uh, from what I understand, they pick up a bunch of crystals up in uh, up in Dransmond, and then they sail all the way down the coast in the Middle Sea, selling it off the whole way. Of course, they make big pay dirt here in Liberio, and. Uh, They've been skirting the route, of course. Ever since the sil the, the the thing is, is that ever since them knights started mar marching up on, uh, uh, mar marching up north, they ain't been letting the land caravans come down with it. They've blockaded off the trade down to Liberio, so High Sail thought he had a good thing coming. Uh, the people down here love them shinies. They love them shinies. Yeah, those. Yeah, uh, good luck with that and the shinies. Uh, I'm sure that uh, nothing bad will happen. Mm. Um, it's been a pleasure, uh, Captain. Uh, you've actually been very helpful, so thank you. I'm glad that you didn't pick my nose too hard. Well, you just tell Grigori Highsail 
that Angon's gonna rip rip his legs off, stuff him up his butt, and then pull them out his mouth, and then turn him upside down and crunch his spine down into nothing and put it up his nose. I will be sure to tell him word for word. And if all of you that. don't tell him that word for word, what's your name? My name's Sebastian Crow. Ah, Sebastian Crow. Well, Sebastian Crow, if I find out that you didn't tell Gregory Highsale what I'm going to do to him, I'm going to take that little face of yours and I'm going to take your eyeballs and I'm going to rip them out and stuff them in your ear holes. And I I'm make gonna a little flip in my hand while he's talking and continue and just to intimidate him a bit. Oh. You get away from me with that spelly stuff. I... It goes out. All right, friends. Are you done running on the wheel? I'm so tired. Woo! I'm so tired. It's so, that it's was just great! Like, it's just so fast. To get one of those for home. She's so fast. She's so fast. Running Pluto, on the wheel, know. Pluto, you are paid... Uh, Eight copper pieces for the work. <laughs> How much money does Veo make? Veo did twice as well as Pluto. She gets two copper. <laughs> oh, that's just. I would you like know what, fish. Veo, fish. I give you. I give you my eight copper, so you can, because uh, you won fair and square. You no, know Veo, I give you eight copper as well because that seems unfair. They could have paid me in fish. I'm just saying. <laughs> We're at a harbor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You would have taken fish heads, even. Uh, yeah. Guys, I made a new friend. Uh, turns out that that boat right over there is the one that we're looking for. It's been parked, parked. Do, no, um, it's been anchored? anchored, anchored for two days out it's a there. Nautical term. <laughs> yes, I, I'm a nautical guy. I knew that. Um. Yeah, so we have a choice here. This lineup looks pretty long, but I honestly, if this guy who's been adamantly looking for a Captain High Sail has been unable to find him to rip out his spine or rip out his butt or rip his butt something into his spine, something involving butts and spines and legs and arms, um, any of combination of those, if he hasn't been able to find Captain High Sail, something tells me he might be a corpse as well, in which case I'm wondering if we just uh, head on out to that boat and take a look around. I mean, I'm open to it, but... Um, yeah, why don't we just uh, procure ourselves uh, one of them rowboats? Yeah. 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 I... I'm gonna it, go look for a, a, a rowboat. It's it's easy enough to hire someone that's willing to 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 row you out uh, to to one of the boats or hire one of one of the boats. Costs just a couple silver pieces. It's very common uh, ar around here, uh, and so you can take it to row out to the uh, to the ill-fated Finch. That seems appropriate. Anything mm -hmm. you want to do before? I I mean, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I jump in the boat. Yeah. Um, oh, not that one. It doesn't have any oars. <laughs> if only there was a way. Just make oars. I can. I bet you could just paddle your way. Anyway, <laughs> I, a, a, we're, we arms. pay somebody. <laughs> with my arms. We find a boat with a person who takes us there. You don't need okay. to swim. I don't need to swim. Oars Nobody are not needs that to swim. To <laughs> boats. Yep. Um, so, taking the boat out, uh, um, as you row out onto the harbor, um, you can, it is, all the ships that are anchored out here are all beneath the shadow of the Enigma Ziggurat, which hovers over the waters of, of the, of the harbor. Um, parked, parked, um, in some of the, sh uh, the, the, the safe shallows of the, harbor of Liberio. The ill-fated Finch is a very large Carrick, three-sailed Carrick ship. So this this is a vessel that you could load it up with a ton of cargo. Um, and as as befits 
most of the, the, the shipping that happens in the continent. Basically, um, what most ships do, um, especially if they're looking for very lucrative trade, is they'll start up in Dransmond and go from Dransmond all the way down the coast of Illyria and then back up around the edge of Tyrene around Caspia and then Liberio and then back around again. So they kind of do this loop of the uh, loop of the the outer coast. Now, of course, there's many that just do the Middle Sea, but that route uh, and depending on how many stops they take along the way, um, these ships can take anywhere from um, a couple weeks to a couple months, depending on how many ports they stop at between Dransmond uh, and and Illyria, and and if they go across through Caspia or or not, um, so and, and so knowing that um, the the ship itself um, otherwise is in good repair, um, the sails have all been closed, right? So the sails are all ro- wrapped up and and bound, um, and the um, and the anchor has been firmly set, so the ship stands there but even as you get close to the vessel it is conspicuously quiet there is not a sailor in the crow's nest nor on the mast tending to the rigging there is no one on and you cannot see a single soul on deck are there uh little like windows on the side or openings of the boat there, there are ports uh, on uh, on one of the the upper decks. So I will just uh, get us uh, get us a map up here. Um, let me just grab your tokens first, so we have that. Guys, what I'm thinking is, when I get to the boat, I can climb on the side of the boat. So before we just get on up there, I was thinking I could sneak up to a side window and just. Not I in. could also send Crowley. Oh, well, that's let's see. We could do that too. <laughs> Less <laughs> danger <mean>, to me. <laughs> I mean, if you really feel like going for a climb and spy, because um, I know Vale loves her climb and spy, uh, then by all means. But if you want to save the trouble, you just let me know, and I'll get my shadow crow. And what time of the day is it now? Um. Well, you would have taken a short rest, um, and uh, so. And w- with the travel time and the investigation, I would say we're 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 getting close to six seven o'clock. And what or time the, is sunset? Uh, seven o'clock uh, uh, um, tonight. Uh, sunset is going to be be happening um, probably more towards um, like sometime between eight and nine. Okay. Yeah. So it's definitely like the sun's going down, right? but the uh um but the ship uh is is here and so as you can see here the the ship itself um you know it's quite a long vessel tip to tail um and you can see that there's the 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 netting along the sides um where the rowboats might be harbored um because this is a ship that could carry some some rowboats of its own but none of them are present on Hmm. the vessel Right there, mm. there's there's no uh, signs of of any of the the, the robots. And yes, there are. Um, uh, there's some indication that yes, there would be um, different different floors to the. Sh- there's several floors to the ship for sure. Veo. Yes. Your call. Send Crowley. I um. I open up one side of my cloak and a shadow crow emerges and flies out to do a little lap around the boat. Uh, Maybe poke its head in a couple windows. Okay. Let's grab um, the token for Crowley. funny i forget that i have a familiar so often probably yeah. useful in combat you know they're actually very useful <laughs> <laughs> and if you have a uh, a hound that you can summon that can uh, 
All right, there, there you go. Um, so nice. um, you can see that there is uh, certainly a, a, there's um, there's three layers to the deck, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got the the topmost deck here, followed by a second higher deck where where the um, where the actual ship is controlled from, then the main deck, and then the forecastle, uh, uh, the the front the front there as well. So um, where would you like to peer in? Uh, well, first, Crowley's going to go... Are, are there, like, little port windows you... Or, like, little windows you set around the boat? Yes. Or not? Yes, yeah. there are. Yeah. Uh, so Crowley's going to go just to the side that we're approaching from and peer in one of the windows on, like, this section of the boat here. Okay. And, um... We're just hanging out in the boat, right? Like, the... And, and the person we hired, we're just, like... Yeah, this is. You, totally you, if you want to hire someone, or if you just wanted to have the boat on your own, that would have been totally fine to just rent a boat. Yeah, is it okay if we? Yeah, because yeah. I feel bad dragging someone out here to yeah. die. Probably. Okay. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> the great. Just, like, <laughs> just feel kind of bad. I'll row it. I'll row it. Okay. Just give me a moment here to adjust the map. Yeah, I don't know if it's caught on. Like, I guess when we go to new cities, they don't get it. But like, I'm sure people don't want to come with us because we're constantly going to really dangerous places. <laughs> like everybody who's ever tagged along with us has either died. It's like, like there are clear red shirts happening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like you're either a main. Are you a main character in this story? Because I don't want to know a last you know, name because that's just going to cause issues. Uh, I want first name. <laughs> like, is your name Sten? You don't want to be here. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. What's your curiosity level around goo? Is it high? <laughs> is it low? We need someone with a lower curiosity level. Okay, let me just pull this over for y'all. Here we go. Great. Okay. So, uh, Crowley is able to peer in to the, the windows, uh, on, the, on this level. So this is the only part of the ship that actually has like windows that you could look in inside. Right. Um, and so here is where you're going to see, um, there are several offices here, um, that are laid out for the captain's quarters and um, the meeting rooms for the crew. Um, this area, th this area of the ship, is, they are glass windows, um, and that's uh, that in in the rooms themselves. the The first sort of chamber here um, appears to be a bed chamber of some kind. So there's a hammock set up with a with a chest of drawers, um, and and the like that might be the captain's quarters. Um, the other room uh, going back into here is more of a captain's office um, with a with a table set up, some maps all around for navigation um, and and the like. Um, there's several um, cabinets and chests of drawers as well, and quite a few barrels of grog and uh, wi wi um, whiskey about. Um, floating around to the other the other chamber, um, it appears to be more of a. Um, uh, a, a room for a few of the other higher level officers of, of the crew. So there's sleeping quarters for two others uh, in, in here, along with their their personal personal effects. What is the state of these rooms? Do they look well kept or do they look in disarray? Hmm. All of the rooms, um, looking around, um, give me a perception check with Crowley. All right. Let me just pop up the old crow here. Seventeen. Okay. There are signs all throughout the room. Several of the tables and chairs are toppled. The drinks are spilled. And you notice that there is, um, there are pools 
of a black bile vomit not far from the captain's quarters and then dra- and then as well as several drag marks of blood well, that's not good you hear me say so you two in the boat uh, Cr- crowley just flies off starts looking in windows and sebastian's just there like eyes rolled back in his head and then you hear him go oh, that's not good <laughs> What do you say? I look up Pluto, Pluto and I'm like, uh. Oh, man. I'm sure it's fine. He says something way different when it's actually bad. Does he? Yeah. He does uh, that what's the worst that could happen thing. Oh, uh, that's that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's still not bad. Whatever he's looking at, still not bad. Oh, uh, that's For gross. Sure. Oh, that's gross. Um, burst out easily. Still not worried. Still hi- hopes are high. I'm I'm gonna fly Crowley kind of over the main deck uh, just to examine the state of the rest of the ship. Yeah. Um. As you fly over the rest of the the main deck uh, with with Crowley, um, you can see that. Crowley flies over the top hatches. These hatches would ostensibly lead directly down into the cargo levels of the the ship. Um, and as Crowley flies over, you can see the octarine glow emitting from below, from the belly, the, the belly of the ship. Um, and um, the all across the, the upper deck of the ship are um are more of these just pools of kind of this black red it you realize actually looking now closer it's you know that black you know that red that is so red it's black like that really deep blood mm-hmm. color where mm-hmm. you're like is that like brown or black and mm-hmm. it's spoiled just long enough this 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 is like that deep like red blood of internal bleeding that is almost black. Uh, Crowley's gonna... I'm gonna snap out of Crowley as he flies back towards me. Um, Well, friends, I have good news and I have bad news. Okay, tell us the bad news. The bad news is that there is a octarine glow coming from the depths of this ship, which implies some terrible delirium mishaps. The other also bad news is that there are bloodstains and black bile, which I would recommend not touching. Uh, in many locations, which I believe signify further the story of the crew being poisoned and dragged off. Poisoned by um, what? That's what we have to figure out. The good news is that this is the right ship. <laughs> I mean, I guess, yeah, that's, that's silver lining. I mean, we kind of already assumed it would be, but... It definitely has a lot of clues here to investigate. Shall we aboard? Yeah, where where do you recommend we go in? Well, I would start with going on to the deck, and then I think that maybe we should check out the captain's quarters. I saw nothing alive or terrifying there, but I did see some stuff that maybe we should take a look at. Okay. Um, I'll hold the boat steady if you two want to go first, and then I'll... Uh... Pluto Jackson. Not going first. Oh, wait. Yeah, that makes sense. Actually, yeah, you guys hold the boat steady, because I'm the only one that doesn't have like the ability to easily climb. Yeah, there's rigging up the side that it's easy enough to get onto the boat oh, okay. uh, and on onto the main deck wherever wherever you would like to wherever you would like to be. Just... Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> where climb up the side of the the ship right right here and try to land. 
You don't yeah, have to so on the top. That, that would land you on the, the deck above these rooms, right? Um, but that's fine to, to cl- then clamber down the stairs uh, to, to here. Um, so o- on the ship, it sways and rocks, and you can hear the creaking of this very empty ship. It's a very empty vessel. Um, question. This is important. My helm... Does it glow? From detecting undead creatures? Mm-hmm. It does not. Well, that's reassuring. There you go. More good news, guys. What's the worst that could happen? And there I'm going to open the that's door. The one. That's the one. <laughs> yeah. So this the, the, the door beyond here is the captain's room. You can see that the, the captain's hammock has been uh, upturned um o- over and the is a chest of drawers for the captain's belongings that has a, a a padlock locked onto it so it is a locked chest left in the in this room there's a, a bit of a rug and a um a cabinet with several uh, um several bottles of rum uh and rye and gin and maybe some grog that's left left here and there is a small table um in in the room with a rancid meal left behind look what looks to be um perhaps uh, a couple um bits of uh uh bread uh and some uh some oranges bits of a, an, an orange and some uh, some fish uh, uh you, either of you guys have any any medicine skills anything like that testing for poisons uh any knowledge um, in poisons I'm not proficient, nope. um, but um, one time I ate a whole bunch of poison ivy uh, on a dare, so I think I can what? handle this. You, you, no. Is it a very itchy inside? What happened I have there? a very low bar for dares, and uh, I was young and naive. This was two summers ago, and... <laughs> Like, uh, like, pre- <laughs> that's that's like right before we met. Listen, Pluto, I yeah. dare you to learn how to identify poisons. There's only one way. No, <laughs> <laughs> never mind. That one is it. Um, I'm okay. I don't know Sweet. what my skill level is going to be here, but I'm going to investigate the the food. And any cups that might be in the area to try to tell if there was anything in the food or cups that may or may not be a poison. I don't know. I, I'm sure it smells rotten, but I feel like. Cool. Do you have any. Uh, are you proficient in a poisoner's kit? Uh, I am proficient in alchemist supplies, All not right. a poisoner's kit. Okay. Um,. In that case, you have some transferable knowledge. So, uh, um, give me a check with your alchemist supplies. Right. There you go. Seventeen. <sighs> Going through through things. If the food was poisoned, um, it would have really required. Um, some coordinated effort and wanting to ch- to get an entire crew of people but there's not enough of this food to um, to get a good sample from because it, it's been left out for at least two days mm. um, there are several um, bottles um, of uh, of various alcohols uh, that are that are around as well Um and it's unlikely that anything would have been in the alcohol because the alcohol would have killed, like, it possibly could have, like, if it was a poison, um, it might have been been in there. But in order for you to determine if a poison was present in any of this, um, at this stage, you might need some magic uh, or, um, or more tools and an environment where you can actually conduct an examination. Like, to determine if any of these things would, would be poison would probably take... 
take a couple hours of testing with the right supplies to Sebastian. determine that. Unless you wanted to just drink things and see if that hits you. Sebastian, why don't you just feed it to Crowley? Oh. <laughs> Instead of drinking it yourself. Or get me to wouldn't drink he it. Just, wouldn't he just poof if there was something bad? You want me to murder my crow? <laughs> Not murder. It's better than taking it yourself, like you were about to do. Yeah, here, give me that. What are you doing? And don't do it to Pluto either. Oh, yeah, I shouldn't do it. Give it to your crow. Veo, do you want to inspect around anything? Yeah, I would love to just... um, Yeah, get more, like, on the ground and see if there's anything, like, dust or any other substances around like just really use kind of a perception sure hybrid. sure uh yeah it, it, um you can investigate the vomit if you wish okay yeah yeah give me a perception check yeah i'm not going near that don't need it 16 um looking at the the smell Here's the looking thing, Veo. The yeah, uh, sorry. Looking at the vomit, and this, this, this is that. Looking it over, Veo. You've eaten a lot of food. You've eaten a lot of bad food. This isn't the type of vomit that someone throws up when they've eaten something that poisoned them, because you would expect more of the food with it. This is blood and bile. What you're looking for is not a poison, but a sickness. Well, so, so it's it's not the stuff they've eaten. Something has happened to them with illness. Yes. Well, I should still take this alcohol for uh, testing, and I start filling my bag with bottles of like wine and such. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what about this lockbox? It is a it is a container that is uh, it is a sturdy chest uh, bound in irons with a heavy padlock on it, about uh, two feet uh, two by two by four in in size. So it's quite large. Is it is it lock is it a locked locked box? Yep. Yep. I got some thieves tools. I'm gonna try. Have these tools. Uh, all right, Pluto. Do you want to do anything in the meanwhile? Um, I am going to actually, while these two are uh, investigating, I'm gonna try to keep um, sort of a watchful eye on the immediate surroundings. I'm gonna make sure that things stay quiet and sort of listen for any changes. Like I want to, I'm, I'm listening for sounds in other rooms or on other decks mm -hmm. and sort of just kind of get, getting a vibe for the ambience because uh, I don't want anything to kind of get the jump on us. Alrighty. Sounds good. You're standing watch then. Um, so um, Sebastian, may, give me a check with your thieves tools. Can I help him? Can I like instruct him? Uh, would you Can like to do him? it? Would you like to take the lead on it then? I don't. I don't you, know which like, of you is better is with these tools. Teaching, teaching moment, yeah. Yeah. Um, I. I mean, I would get. I think it would both be the same because isn't it just your a d twenty plus proficiency? proficiency? Uh, plus yeah. dexterity. So what's your dexterity? Oh, it's maxed. Uh, you go ahead. I'll. Uh, I'm like about to start picking it, and I like fumble and drop the lock pick, and I'm like, you know, I'm like I'll just take. The <laughs> I start to do the lock. So it's uh, proficiency dex uh, eighteen. Not the best locks in the world, but you open it up, and inside are several talents of silver, and several thick heavy books the ship's logs mm. silver logs heavy 
<laughs> open your <laughs> open your bag of holding. I put the silver in. How much silver is in there? Um, about five thousand uh, gold pieces worth of silver. Yeah. What? Yeah, of silver bars, basically. Yeah. Veo, do you want to write that down? Yes. I'm sure the crew won't be needing those anymore, so um, consider that payment for our investigation. Uh, I'm going to start rifling through the ship's logs to this most recent voyage mm -hmm. uh, to try to gather any key information that I might find regarding their journey. Yeah, so... The most recent log shows that the ship came to Liberio. It's it's a note from the captain. Um paid in silver um customer Society of Conscientious Practice and Scientific Discovery paid five thousand for direct passage Dransmond to Liberio no stops what was the name? <laughs> Society of what? Um, the uh, the name that is is it was the Guild of Conscientious Practice and Scientific Discovery of Alpbrook University um, paid 5,000 gold pieces for uh, a group of its uh, for, for a group of passengers to have direct passage non-stop from Dransmond to Liberio along with their cargo. Scientific Discovery... <laughs> Nice. Nice. That's a long name. Yep. <laughs> Say it one more time. I'm ready. The down. Guild of Conscientious Practice and Scientific Discovery of Altbrook University. Of Altbrook Uni. Yeah, I've heard of these guys. Have you? Yeah. Who are they? They're a couple of. Or they're a trio of scientists from Altbrook who, um,. I don't We're, think Sebastian has ever heard of this. These people. <laughs> uh, Sebastian is a very worldly man. Mm. Uh, he wrote a book about it. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, is I don't. This a I don't know book? if the, I don't know if this guild is actually mentioned in the book. I think that uh, uh, um, that. Um, but well, okay. Sebastian might know that there's apothecary groups that work out of Altbrook, so he yes. might not know the specifics. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's Altbrook uh, is quite well known for uh, training apothecaries. Uh, so there's there's a few organizations from Altbrook that uh, that have been sort of growing in in their interests. And I'm I'm I've overheard that they've been doing their own research into delirium. But why would they come here? Why indeed? Why would they want a nonstop journey? It's strange. Um, the the other ship's logs um, mention um, the the most recent logs. Just paging through them, mention that the crew purchased delirium um, to sell for trade. Um, that they had purchased um, delirium directly through um, several several different. Uh, suppliers um, and that uh, that included um, several um, several names that you recognize from Emberwood Village um, through through their um, their their sales so one um, one name that uh, you had heard around but not had too much dealings with back in back in Emberwood um, but uh, is is someone that was uh, that was known to you um, while you were there um, was uh, let me just pull it up here. Sorry, I got my down here. Um, was uh, purchasing a large amount of de delirium from Orson Fairweather um, of uh, fair of Fairweather Trades and Exports, 
but also delirium from house von baden directly um as well as uh delirium uh procured um through um through uh the just noted it's just marked qm company q m uh oh um and yes. according yeah. according to these logs um the they were transporting at least one delirium geode um and nearly um 20 delirium crystals and dozens of smaller delirium shards a geode wow. yeah judging by the manifest here they they probably had close to 30,000 gold pieces worth of delirium on board wow should we check and see if there's any delirium left on it the ship sounds, yeah. i guess we should yeah go downstairs where the glow is coming from and see what's uh what's there it looks yeah. like we've got we've got I mean, we knew Emberwood Village was shipping out Delirium. Uh, also, House Von Baden is no surprise. But this QM is very concerning to me. Is it? Could be the Queen's Men. Yeah. Or it could be... Quinton Monopoly. A, the Quinton Monopoly. <laughs> what? Either I'm way, just, I, I mean, it could be we're anything. in trouble. If it's the Quinton Monopoly, then I'm going to be relieved. Yeah. But if it's the Queen's Men, that's a problem. Yeah, it's, uh, I got my eggs in one basket. Well, mm. I I've been listening. I haven't heard anything, right? Nothing unusual. No sounds. No disturbances. The no. The final note in the shipping manifest is that also on board are several finished magic items built with delirium. Um, and there is a note saying that they that the the ship received additional danger pay given the volatility of the items involved. Um, the the delirium the only other thing that you can tell from the shipping manifest was that the crew um, had not secured a buyer. Um, generally, the the they're from just flipping through the logs, you can see that this the generally they usually expected to sell the delirium um, to whoever would buy it in Liberio, um, and that most often, if you flip back through through the logs, most often they were selling it to the Amethyst Academy here in Liberio when they in previous in previous um, exp expeditions that they had mm. done. Yeah, oh, they were selling it to Rath's dad for a robot army. Great, uh, and 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 quite notable that this QM supplier probably supplied like half of the stuff that was bought by the academy. Jeez. Over over the span of like the past year. Oh, this we need these books. These will give us some kind of leverage. Yeah, and we need to start negotiating. Um, to show That's, some of the challenges that we have to overcome when these this this delirium is just getting like shipped out to these places. No wonder these, no wonder there's undead just like rising beneath one of the greatest temples in Liberio. Uh, it's been sunken into the calmer systems <laughs> of our world. How are we gonna? How are we gonna? untether it <laughs> i don't know you you're right like pluto you're right veo you're right pluto we should keep the books veo i don't know how we're gonna how we're the, I, the it's, last it's a lot. detail that you note is that the the captain's logs note the crew's delight that the silver order had blockade like the silver orders march from um from Illyria up past uh, Leuchten towards Drakenheim created a sort of a blockade for the land route that Delirium would have taken to get down to Liberio. 
So the captain notes how ever since that this the silver order invading Westamar might have been the best thing for their profits because um they because it created a demand for the ocean route that bypassed the silver order's blockade prevent which prevented delirium from going so they're just like they're, there's notes from the captain being giddy about how much they could mark up the price of delirium because of the war just so they created a, their own supply and demand problem. Now this keeps getting messier and messier. Oh, you guys want to go in the basement and see if there's horrible monsters down there? Cool. Yes. I think, uh, or maybe survivors, but not likely, right? I the... could be one and the same at this point with the amount of delirium we just yeah. read about. If you see any survivors kill them <laughs> so that they're not survivors anymore ask them questions we're having first? a no survivor rescue party all right zero we're walking mm. away with zero. zero i guess let's head down into uh, the belly of the ship i uh draw ignatius and uh lead the way okay down deeper into the depths well um, as you uh, as you travel deeper into the depths of the ship itself, uh, as I noted, you don't necessarily have to um, uh, take like what route do you want to use to travel the the ship? Because as I as I noted earlier, um, if you are on the main deck of the ship, right? These um these uh these grates they looking down you can see that they lead directly down to the ship's hold right so they buy, they pass through the 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 internal levels of the ship so that if these were opened up a crane could just pick up the cargo from the the ship's hold rather than needing it uh, uh otherwise but these uh, right now are are closed shut so you can see the delirium like what you can see looking down through them is there is a uh, kind of a two-tiered level to the ship's hold like uh, uh like it's almost like a little warehouse down there um and looking through you can see several um several there, there's basically the octarine glow is coming just through the cracks in these lead line chests that are placed uh at, at, in the the bottom of the ship guys oh this is just great Virgo, do we oh um i don't i have we one aquax Virgo left uh i have two so Feo, i could give you one should we just take it now I don't know if we need it because we're not going into the haze, but I worry about the contamination. Well, I mean, stay behind me, friends. Um, I've got an iron stomach from all that poison ivy I ate a couple of summers ago. <laughs> I can take it. Um, I think, I think if uh, with the ship's design. Do we want to risk the the speed up? We can get down one of these cargo holds and just go right to the bottom. Or do we want to take the more natural approach? I'm okay with going straight down. I'm okay with going straight down. So if I, I if I lift one of the one the, of the cargo holds up the blocks, yeah, and, yeah. I, and 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 take a look down. Wh which one do you want to lift up? Let's go with, um, let's do Big Daddy. Okay. Hey, hey Pluto, great job. See, see what I did there? Because oh. it's a great. You're lifting oh. a great. Oh, I thought but, you were um, actually complimenting me. Everyone I, takes I mean, 2d6 points of intelligence damage. Oh. <laughs> Even me? I'm the one who nailed that joke. Yeah, especially. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay i don't get it uh, yeah i don't get it either um 
All right, let me just. <laughs> Wait, so am I doing a great Thanks, job? Thanks, Veo. You are doing a great job. You're also lifting a grade. It was a, it was double. I was complimenting you. Your muscles look really big when you lift up giant grates. Okay. Ladder so. to go down this hole. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You Can open up that? you open up the central grates, <laughs> smashing through the what what holds them shut. Basically, there's just like a latch that opens it up. And you yeah. look down and you see the pile of stacked chests down in the bottom and and the octoring glow around. And as you look down into the the base of the ship, you can see the murky fog that fills the bottom of the ship and you can feel the in something in here. The contamination is intense. You can feel it below the ship's hold, as if the as if something has keyed up the delirium that is stored down in the in the ship, and that has it reacting on overdrive. Um, do we do need the expergo? I I actually I'm gonna pull out my two expergo and I toss you one veo. I'm like, might need these. What Wait, no, this is the jabby and the heart one, right? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yep. Ow! <laughs> All right. It never gets easier. <gasps> it's about a thirty-foot drop down to the bottom of the hold. Who's gonna go first? Will it hurt if we just go? Um, There's I'm lots going... of rope around. Yeah, I'm gonna tie off uh, a close bit of rope. Maybe a few. I'm gonna tie off a few lines and um toss them down and picking one of the sturdy ones i uh, begin the uh descent all right you descend down into the lower levels of the ship's hold as you slide down you pass by a gallery a gallery level basically as i said you can imagine that the ship's hold is like a warehouse with a catwalk around the, the outside. So there's several levels where all the cargo is piled high. And the ship was certainly transporting more than just delirium based on the number of uh, uh, chests and boxes and crates and barrels that are all stacked here. Obviously, there were their own supplies. As you head down into the ship's hold, the smell of ozone assaults your nostrils the telltale sign of reactive delirium and you feel the pressure of its electric energy um reverberating out of the crate that is that is below you um and the contamination that is washing off this cargo even as you come down here um I need a constitution saving throw. Um, and I don't get like advantage because I have no, the Aquax no. Virgo. It's just I can yeah. use it to take away the fails. Twelve. Uh, Seventeen. Seventeen. That is success. I, I only need it from Paluto so far because he's the only oh. one that's gone down. Right. Whoa. Um, you, you succeed, but the contamination is so extreme down here that you'll need to make the saving throw every round you're down here. Oh. Yeah. The start of your it's turn. Heavy. Yeah. It's heavy. Something. Is it like the D-Pays? Pluto, is it like the D-Pays? It's worse. It's way worse. It's heavy. Don't turn into a chest mouth spider man again, please. I make no promises. As you come down, you see one of what you couldn't see from up above. There is a crate that has been pried open. It is a chest. This crate is uh, about f um, four feet by four feet in size by as much tall and it is bound in heavy iron it's not made of wood at all but the top of it has been pried open and scattered to the side and octarine light is spilling out from it which is the main source of an illum illumination down here 
you can hear the ringing coming off of it in your ears. Mm. Pluto. There, beyond this, in the ship's hold, there are pillars that support the ship. So the it feels like as you descend down, like the ship is all around you, like going inside a cracked open rib cage where there is some rancid glowing heart. Veo, Sebastian, what will you do? Uh, Veo, maybe I should go next just in case uh, I fall or something. I don't know. I feel like good climber, bad climber, good climber, you know? Makes sense. Uh, all right. Um, I'm going to grab the rope and try my best with my limited skills to, to shimmy down. I'm going to watch you. Okay. Sebastian, you shimmy down. Give me a constitution saving throw. 13. Sebastian, you fail. I'm going to use one expergo point. Okay. You take 10 necrotic damage, but you don't gain the contamination level. Yeah, I could taste it. <laughs> in the it's in my mouth. Veo, as you begin to come down, you and Sebastian can both give me perception checks. Hell. Uh, oh, 31. Veo, you it's, see it. It's in my eyes. I don't see anything. Something, as Pluto turned around to watch Sebastian come down, he saw a flicker of movement, a thick tentacle, like a tree trunk, whipping out from the darkness behind some of the crates, about to latch around Pluto's leg, and then slinking tendrils that reach up the underside of the entire ship. All of the crates it's not coming out from the crate it was the crate it didn't come out from anything else it's coming out of the ship itself and that's where we're going to end for the night oh. <laughs> I'm not even paying attention <laughs> yeah I'm like rubbing my eyes I'm like Coughing. I, don't, I have no idea what's happening. Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I get to the bottom. I'm like coughing and stuff. Veo sees all this and like Pluto's just like arm around Sebastian. Like, you okay, bud? You okay? Some water. You want some water in your eyes? I got you, buddy. <laughs> I need. I need an eye rinse. Do you have? I need an eye rinse, Pluto. <laughs> Die. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Great. It's a giant delirium monster ship. Yeah, yeah, if the ship is the monster, we literally just crawled into it. We're like in deeper. Like really into it. Which yeah. means we have to go out the butt. I think is the faster way. <laughs> well, we'll find out uh what is the monstrous fate in store in the belly of this uh ship. Uh, next week uh, when when we're back Ooh. okay but uh, 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 but a big thank you as always to Kelly Jill and Joe our fantastic players for playing along tonight and a huge thank you to Kyle for working diligently behind the scenes to keep the stream going I know that we had some technical difficulties tonight Kyle thank you for uh you know taking care of what you could on your end and a huge thank you to monty martin our dungeon master um for running this incredible mystery uh i've been enjoying this little chapter very very much and it just keeps getting better and i i love it i love a good investigation uh so thank you very much for running such a great game tonight yeah yeah well um it's been a, a lot of fun. Um, what uh, what sh uh, what shout outs yeah. we got tonight? Thank you, Monty. Thank you so much for tonight. And I um, want to thank uh, some of the talented artists that have produced some incredible assets that we use in our games. And uh, we encourage you to support some of these amazing creators and use them in your uh, stream games too uh, or your home games. 
Um, we have uh, Roll20 is our virtual tabletop. We've got some player character artwork by uh, Jeremy Cole, Elizabeth Perot, uh, cartography by Josh O. Um, we use music by Tabletop Audio. Where, where are the maps from tonight? Uh, oh, Monty, these beautiful maps. Um, I believe um, these these ones are uh, actually um, these quick. This is from a really cool um, map pack uh, that is actually on uh, Roll20 um, uh, that I really quite like. Um, the creator of it um, is, uh, sorry, let me just, we, we've, we've used a bunch of their stuff uh, many times. Gabriel Picard, who does a lot of our right. other accessories. Gabriel Picard, the, nice. the, the, uh, um, uh, He has a whole uh, set of assets for, like, basically any vehicle you can imagine uh, Gabriel Picard's done a map of that. So uh, uh, I got all those packs through Roll20. Uh, and then we also had some uh, maps from the Cathedral by, uh, by Neutral Party as well. Nice. All right. Don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. You can find all of your favorite Dungeon Juice shirts, including Yes, 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 Troll, Killer, etc. The faves. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. And of course, our videos and live streams are made possible because we have an amazing Patreon community that supports our work. If you enjoy what we do on Twitch, YouTube, and elsewhere, please consider becoming a patron of our channel. It really helps us continue to make this great content. You can find out, you can join our channel at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. The links are also below. Um, and it just helps continue to create this work. So a big thank you to all of our patrons for supporting our channel, and we hope to see you in our community too. And we also have a Discord community exclusive for our patrons. So if you are joining our Patreon, make sure to hop on our Discord where you can chat with all of us about Drakenheim, D&D, all the cool stuff, even non-D&D stuff if you want. Uh, but also we do monthly writer's rooms on the Discord and we do uh, monthly Q&As and we just pop in there a lot to answer questions. We also have... Um, feedback and play test forums for people to chat directly with us about all of that stuff for our current Kickstarter that is uh, in the works, our play test for our new book. Uh, so all of that is happening on our Discord, so make sure to hop in there. Yeah, and we also have all of our content on YouTube, which you can check out. We post new videos every other Tuesday and every Thursday, YouTube, dun uh, the, our YouTube channels, uh, which is youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. And be sure to join us live next Tuesday when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube, and you can check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. That Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you next time when we find out the fate of Dracodime. <laughs>